is going on my ddd fam it has been a while it's been a few weeks since i've posted a last video sorry i went like and left y'all high and dry um i was focusing trying to focus all my attention on the regionals that i just got back from playing this deck playing uh yours truly the best deck um so like i i didn't want i just wanted to focus all my attention on it and try to master my list which i feel like i kind of did i kind of switched the deck up a lot since la the last time i like showed the discord fam what i was running uh, i decided to run the adventure engine uh, one thing i will say um before we head into this is this will be a longer video so if you're just here for the list you're in the wrong place go ahead and exit out now because we don't like your kind around here um I'm going to break down my thoughts on the deck, my thoughts on the versions of the deck, my thoughts on the deck moving forward, what I'm going to do, what I would potentially change um, with the cards that we currently have now instead of like future cards or that we're going to get because I will probably update the deck then. So that's another thing I want to say too is go ahead and expect... Um, a lot of updates and different versions of this deck or different versions of Albaz or anything like that. I will have a lot coming. I'm obsessed with this deck. I love this deck. Um, so yeah, be ready for that. Another thing too is even though I this is a regionals deck profile that I took, I will not be talking about my matchups or my uh, stuff like that. I'll tell you what I play, but I'm not gonna go into detail about that because I'm currently still at the time of recording this video, editing the vlog. So if you wanna find the information on that, you'll have to go watch that video. Um, before we get into this again, please hit the like button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button if uh, you haven't already as well. Like 60 or 70% of you guys that are watching my videos are returning people that are not subscribed. So just hit the subscribe button, you're coming back anyways. Also, I'd like to give a big shout out to the people who actually um, ran the local i mean ran the uh regionals they uh they did very very well um which was in lexington uh, i think they were called the uh, monster cards or whatever it is something like that if i butchered their name i apologize they are very nice very good people very awesome folks very well organized and safe and everything like that it was an awesome experience shout out to everybody else who came it was really nice um also shouts to jeremy too because jeremy helped me pay for the adventure engine because i decided literally basically almost at the last minute that i wanted to play the adventure engine because i feel the adventure engine is more versatile and is the best version in my personal opinion the deck can obviously play without it i get that but for overall versatility and overall extension the adventure engine is better I'm sorry, it just is. Um, another thing too, um, starting next week, the merch store, uh, everything will be 15% off for the um, rest, I uh, think for a whole week straight, as what I, the email told me about from the shop. So um, go ahead and go down there and get your merch next week or go down there and get it now. Um, starting the 4th, May 4th, I believe. So obviously may the fourth be with you there you go but outside of all that and awesome shenanigans of our regionals too this was the other highlight of my day besides hanging out with my friends and playing you give oh, this thing's gorgeous very clean very clean but with that being said let's go ahead and get into this deck profile uh outside of like what i will talk about that i may potentially change there's nothing else outside of what i probably will say that i will change I love the way the deck performed. The deck actually did very well, and but it's just in some situations, I didn't do very well. So my deck didn't fail me in certain situations. I failed my deck in certain situations, if that makes sense. Um, but starting it out, uh, we got for, uh, I'm gonna break this down in engines. So we got three Alibur. I am on three Alibur, even though I am playing the adventure engine, mainly because you wanna see a starter and no, even if you see the adventure engine and this, it's not a drawback because a lot of people will be like, well, you can't really use his effect. Who cares? I have him for next turn. That's all that matters. And it, you always want to see come some kind of starter. I always wanted to be able to have some kind of uh, play that I could potentially do. 
Then we are running two Tragedy, one Ad Libitum, and that's it for the monsters. I'm not running Drama. I cut Drama. Even in my pure build, I cut Drama because I got tired of bricking on him. I saw that card way too much. Literally, I mean, if you're familiar with me, you know I draw one ofs like it's nobody's business anyways. But outside of that, I drew that card more than I did probably any other card, and I got tired of bricking on it. And his effect never really came up that much. I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of cheeky, and you'd like to see it late game, maybe, when you're running low on resources. But this deck mainly wants to just keep Lube and Ad, and uh, that's basically it. If I could run a second copy of Ad Libitum, I most definitely would, so I wouldn't have to worry about recycling him so much. Um, then on for the branded spells, we got three branded opening. The one that's like basically the best card besides like, but then again, I'll say that about almost every branded spell that puts in work when you're, uh, they get your engine running with um, your adventure engine. This specials or adds your uh, um, Despia monsters, which is like your ad uh, your um, Alibur and stuff. Um, moving on to the best card in the entire like, deck is branded fusion there's nothing i need to say about this uh it's it it's like someone at konami was like here let's uh, i bet you you can't make a card more broken than should all fusion and the guy was like hold my beer and just made this this card is gross this card is disgusting and it is just one card win games and then the card that actually saved my ass a lot this weekend was brand, uh, branded in red. This card is nuts. You do not need to run this at three. If you run at three, you're just bricking. Uh, I've never found myself needing more than one because you just recycle all your spells with tragedy. I sometimes sided one out and still won the games by just looping it with uh, um, uh, tragedy because then you can... With this version, there's very low like spell count, so you just keep searching Brandon Fusion with Alibur, and then you just keep resetting your uh, Brandon Red with Tragedy. So um, it, it usually is a more than enough to get you there. That's actually it for the Despia lineup. Um, one thing I will say too, another thing, is moving forward and like. The, this is one thing I would change. This is one of the things, if not the only thing, that I would change. Moving forward, I really think I will probably cut Fusion Destiny down to one. And hear my thoughts on this. Hear my thoughts before you go crazy. One, I think it's going to go to one anyways on the list coming up. Two, this deck and myself personally have made Dark Phoenix Enforcer Des DPE... I've made DPE plenty of times without actually needing Fusion Destiny. So Fusion Destiny will end up becoming a cross-out target, and then you could just basically just make hard make DPE, because it's not very hard to do at all. You can hard make DPE very easily with this deck. It's not hard to do at all. And um, the sliding in the second slot of... Uh, Fusion Destiny will probably be uh, theater. Uh, theater actually comes up a like for me personally more than like any other card because post turn one, like you can really use Brandon Theater to help you fuse when you're trying to do your adventure combo. On top of that, Brandon Theater provides you so much more like um, grind game than anything else. On top of that. It actually provide it, you get to use Alibur's full potential with theater as where without theater you don't because 90% of the time you're just going to normal this to get branded fusion, then fuse off and then just use this for branded and red target, worst case scenario. So you don't get Alibur and Grave, and Alibur's graveyard effect comes in clutch. Like I've just straight up won games because I turned off people's access codes with his graveyard effect. So his graveyard effect is like clutch so like outside of that the only way to really get him in grave is to dump him as material or to dump him uh, uh send him to grave off from your hand with branded opening and that's not very optimal to me also another thing too that a lot of people don't know and i haven't heard anybody talk about is branded a uh, branded th the theater 
The theater's secondary effect says, if a non-fusion fairy monster leaves the field, you can special summon one le level eight or higher fusion monster from your graveyard, right? Which is how you keep looping your crap. So basically, this is where it comes in. Alibur will special itself when a fusion leaves the field by any means. Alibur will special. They attack over. Then you get your monsters back. But guess what? The adventure token is a freaking fairy. So if they out your adventure token, you can bring back your fusions. So in mid to late game, theater comes up clutch. And that's, I, I kind of really missed that moving, going, uh, going into this vent a couple of times because maximizing your like effects is like key is key. You want to, you, no matter what deck you're running, no matter what cards you have, you always want to maximize the potential or the utility of every card to the best, like fullest potential. So it, you get like maximum value out of it basically. And I want to do that with Alibur. And I really think theater can do that for me. So moving forward to sum summarize it, I'm basically probably going to drop fusion destiny to one and then run one theater because theater's never a deck card. It's a basically a poly on legs. It's a field spell, Polly. It baits Ogre, and if they, like, Ogre that, if you like if you have that in hand, you, like, hard draw, but you still have adventure combo, you can just hard make that, try to make something to try to bait the Ogre, and then if they Ogre that, then you just straight go adventure combo. It's it's gross. Um, but, yeah, moving on to the rest of the uh, deck now. I just wanted to let you guys know that. Um we got two Fallen of Albaz and one Light Hexil. Hexil's gross. It's stupid. Free Dragoon, free anything, really. So, yeah, it comes in clutch. Uh, put in some work this weekend, honestly. Then again, a lot of my cards did. Moving on to the Adventure Engine. It's going to be kind of different from everyone else's, kind of, sort of. Um, I'm running one enchant uh, two Enchantress, one Wandering Griffin Rider, three Right. One Fateful, and one Draco back. Fun fact, out of all these cards and out of, out of all what the engine does, Draco back is the sole purpose I even decided to, I wanted to run this. The fact it can out, um, like, floodgates and anything, like, gross is the reason why I want to run it. I didn't want to really, I didn't, I mean, obviously, Griffin is nice, but Griffin's not the sole purpose why I wanted to run it. This is the sole purpose why I wanted to run it. Um, but the reason why this is my lineup I could. I have a third copy. It's not why I. I this. This is. That's not why I decided to run two. My reasoning on two is your number one card you want to see in your hand is rights, anyways. So this will get you your rights, right? Literally, pun intended. But I wanted to minimize playing into certain hand traps. Okay. So, like, let's say you have the branded opening in hand and all that, but you also have this, okay? So, you basically have full combo. You have both combo. But you start with this. This, if you start with this to get your right, you're playing into Droll. And I like the fact that this deck as a whole doesn't play into that many high-impact hand traps. It does not play... You can play around Lancia. You can play around Droll. Because Fateful can equip instead of add. This, you can hard hard draw this instead of using and forcing the Enchantress to get the right. It can play around Nib. Full combo, you end on with the four summon. Four summon. So, or less. So, it, it doesn't plays around Nib. All these high impact hand traps, it plays around. Even Floodgates. The only thing I'm going to give you uh, from uh, regionals is I got anti-spelled. Right? He anti-spelled me. I just went Alber, go get um, I, uh, Brandon in red. I, I had a Brandon opening in hand. I chained the Brandon opening to the thing, to the uh, anti-spell. And then I just normal Alber and went and got freaking Brandon in red and played on his turn and broke his entire board with Chimera. This deck can play around high impact cards, whether they be hand traps or floodgates. And that's another reason why I dropped Enchantress down to two. Because basically, you're just going to resolve her effect once to get this. And once you have the full thing in rotation, the other one just basically becomes link fodder. 
or Chimera material because you can special it and link off into Verte to summon anything you want or you can just keep it in hand or field to make Chimera to plus even harder. So that's my reasoning on that because I wanted to play around as many high impact hand trap as possible and I really honestly like this lineup. On top of that, yes, this deck can utilize the adventure engine but it doesn't, it's not the sole focus. The sole focus is obviously uh, branded, uh, um, branded fusion. But yeah, moving on to the rest of the stuff. We got the DPE engine, two uh, fusion destiny, uh, two, uh, and then the, obviously the fusion materials. Like I said, moving forward, this is probably going to become the theater. Um, I never even really saw fusion. I only saw fusion destiny. I think twice that entire tournament, once or twice, and then because um, I only made DPE, I think three times. And I made it once or twice with this, and then I hard made it once or twice. I can't remember. But I know I didn't see Fusion Destiny hardly at all. On top of that, another reason, hear me out too, I forgot to mention. Another reason why this will probably become theater and would only run one is because in the next core set, we get that dragon monster that just says no to Dragon Link. But it also, if you're not playing against a dragon deck and you don't need it, you dump it off of Mirror Jade, and during the end phase, it searches Fusion Destiny. So the one Fusion Destiny can get searched. So that's another thing you gotta keep in mind too. So if you're searching the Fusion Destiny, why would you need a second copy in there to be Brick, unless you don't care because you're running Eltlish the Golden Lord or something like that. So that's another thing you gotta think of too. Minimize the Bricks, maximize the consistency and utility. Hand trap lineup, it's gonna be weird. Two Ash, two Bell, two Ogre, three Droplet. And the reason behind the weird lineup is because cross out. Okay, hear me out on my hand traps. A lot of people say that this card is bad, this format. You're just bad at the game. This card is freaking stupid. This card puts in so much freaking work for me. It's un always does. It, I don't think this will, the format, there will never be a format where this card's bad. I, I swear. I swear. This card is just gross. Um, cross out, I, oh my God, dude. Cross out put in so much freaking work this weekend. It was ridiculous. When people found out I was main decking this, it was cracked. Like, definitely against the adventure, mirror match, or just, not even the mirror match, just another deck running adventure. This card actually, I'm pretty sure, saved me and won me a single game because they kind of broke my board, and all I had was an Alibur in hand for the follow-up, but they had plenty of resources to go off. They didn't play around this, and they played right into it. They activated right, and I just went cross out, and it, it just, I just, uh, they couldn't do nothing. They passed, and I mm, normal summoned Alibur, the new Alistair. Got Branded Fusion and just won the game. Because I made Dragoon uh, late game, and I knew since they had no resources um, that Dragoon would get me there and get me the dub. Um, then two Ogre. Ogre is, I mean, it's Ogre. It put in some serious work. I don't like threes when I run cross out because you want one in deck, one in hand. One in deck, one in hand, basically. You don't want a brick on them. So Ogre is Ogre. It puts in some work against field spells. And everything else. Um, the most lackluster one actually for me was uh, Ghost Bell. It's not the fact that it's not good this format. It's just my matchups. Ghost Bell didn't do Jack Dilly Squat against any of them. The only one that it came up with, but I didn't even see her, which was Sword Soul. I played against Sword Soul, other and, and th this never came up because they my, a lot of my matchups. There's only like a couple of people that were actually even running like DPE or something like that. But Ash put in some work. That's that's for certain, which is crazy. Um, moving on to the rest of the spells. Tactics. This card is so mandatory, this format. I, I can't preach it enough. Um, <laughs> tactics actually allowed me to resolve evenly matched twice in one game. Because I made I, I used evenly matched, went to main phase two, made a semi board. He broke it, passed turn back to me. I tried to use a card and he used Ash. I chained uh not, not chained, but I went I went and activated talents. 
drew two more, had shit draws because I drew in a draw and another evenly. So I just used evenly uh, again to break the board, but he still had enough gas to uh, OTK me the next turn. Last two cards in the deck is one foolish, one card combo, and call by the grave. This card is nuts. <laughs> this card is stupid. Call by the grave, the sacky common one of, uh, did a lot of work for me this weekend. There was one instance, it was kind of sad. I kind of felt bad. I mean, it wasn't like nothing too, too crazy, but it was high impactful for him because I guess he didn't have nothing else in hand. I was playing against a Trap Outlitch player, and he... Uh, he went for the unknown because he I had Brandon Red set and I had this set. And he didn't he knew he wanted to go for the unknown because he didn't know this one. He'd use Golden Lord to send this. And I just chain Golden Lord to, I chained this to Golden Lord to banish the Golden Lord so he couldn't get his Golden Lord back and then we just OTK the next turn. Um that's actually it for the main deck. 45. 45 is a clean 45. I like this deck at 45. It runs very well at 45. Um moving on to the extra. Extra deck for the Lynx. We got one little Uzi Vert. Vert to Anaconda, future band card of America. When Verte gets banned, if you're watching this video after Verte gets banned, um, I pro first of all, I'll probably end up having an updated profile, so go check that out. But if not, uh, run Dark, the Dark Charmer. Um, moving on to the last Link in the deck is uh, Link Spider for... And just in case they like nib us or something and we can get some, uh, something back, like like they nib us, we can get something back and then we can take the link and them token a link into this. Um, no. You can um, go into Verte. Also, the uh, adventure token uh, is uh, 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 you can link the token into this and then go into Verte. So basically, if you like have another. Uh, Enchantress, you can special Enchantress, then link the token into this, then link the Enchantress and the to uh, this into Verte, and then you have your Mirror Jade or whatever you want, really. That That's it for the link. I mean, the links. Moving on to the fusions, which I have changed a lot since uh, I last talked to you guys uh, that are actually watching this from the Discord. Um, I got two Mirror Jade. Uh, the sec I was only running one, but the second one actually did come up. I didn't really think you needed a second one because you could just recycle the second, the first one with uh, add. But um, you know, uh, Ghost Bell is a card or whatever, so uh, you can't really add nothing back off of freaking Brandon Red when you get belled and you don't have cross out in hand. So it's just something to know. And the second one does come up. There was actually a situation where. Uh, hard made one he outed it and then he took all of his resources to break the board and then i just had an albaz in hand and he had an he had an all mirage and i just normal summoned took his all mirage and made this it's gross uh two albion don't judge me for the commons i just didn't want to pay out the ass for freaking uh ultras when i could just get it basically for free um two labellion uh, Lebellion, like, actually, I was running this at one because I, as back when I was only running one of those, I thought maybe I could just, uh, shuffle the one back and basically have two, which is kind of the case, but for security reasons, I want a second one. Then the card that actually no one runs, and I can't physically understand why I really freaking can't, and I'm about to explain, it is Ash Dragon. A lot of people who are running pure or running, um this version are not running titanoclad and for the life of me i can't understand why because if you're playing in a mirror match or you're playing in a against a deck that is a light or a dark based let's just go with mirror match for an example okay you can send titanoclad off of mirror jade to banish a card on their field and then if they end on let's say you're playing a mirror match and they're trying to just burn you to death and they end on a um, masquerade, okay? You can literally plus so freaking hard on their turn, it's redonkulous. Because during end phase, the Titanoclad can special the Albaz, discards a card off of Albaz, steal their freaking um, masquerade, to make your own Lebellion, 
Labellion effect can shuffle anything back if you want to to make an Albion, and then an Albion can make something else. You basically, off of just sending Titanic Lad, you, you banish a card on their field, and you make three fusions off of one summon. So you are plussing tremendously. Banish one, summon three fusions. I don't know if no one has just thought of that, or they don't care about that, or they're afraid that they're not going to play against light or darks. But I'm telling you right now, as Alba is here to is here to stay, no matter what form it's in. So I really like that combo, and I like that route. And Al like Titanic Clyde, like yeah, no, nah, that card is nuts. It never came up this weekend because I never got to see a mirror match, sadly. Or a freaking light or dark deck. And I know that kind of sounds hypocritical because I literally just said you're going to see it. But all my friends, for an example, all uh, six the rounds they played, even though it was an eight-round tournament they dropped out, the majority of their rounds were against Albaz. Um, and then for the Despia monsters, we got Quert uh, um, Masquerade and Quertus. One and one's good. I was running two Masquerade, but like if you're not running the pure version, you don't really need a second copy of this because in the pure version, you're just turboing this out because you have plenty of other ways to get back into your engine. As of where with this one, it has uh, two different engines in it, so they they uh, you usually have to choose between one or the two, uh, between either Adventure or Despia. So it's okay going into Masquerade every once in a while. On top of that, they always have an Alibur and Grave anyways, is where this version, it's hard to get Alibur and Grave. Unless you're running the field spell, which if you're watching this, run the field spell. Um, and then uh, Quartus, you have to run it definitely in this build because when he gets leaves the field by any of like any reason at all that has to do with your opponent, it re it like it it replaces itself so it can special an Alibur from deck and then you can uh, pop off from there on your opponent's turn too. On top of that, it's kind of hard to out anyways because anything's not level of fusion, he just makes them zero. And then the one thing that's kind of going to trigger a lot of y'all, but hear me out, is uh, one only one Chimera. Um, I only run one because this deck has so much going on and has so many different ways to overwhelm and swarm your opponent and play through everything they have that this is not your sole purpose, of, like sole way to OTK. We have pl we have a plenty of ways to OT OTK. And on top of that, I never found a situation to where I actually needed a second copy of this this weekend or any time playing this deck. One is more than enough. Um, and then one uh, Dragos Tetalia, um, one Dragoon, and one DP to round off the extra deck, okay? Uh, one thing I will say is when we get the new uh, new card, uh, Drago's Totelia will probably become the new card. Um, even though he's uh, uh, Drago's very freaking good, I, I don't know. Um, I'll have to mess around with the deck and see and play with ratios. But as we sit right now, this will probably become that dragon monster that can search Fusion Destiny and is just a contact fuse against Dragon Link because Dragon Link will come back post Ghost of the Past. So, um, you'll definitely need that Albaz Dragon Monster in the um, extra deck. Uh, moving on to the side deck, I will show y'all my side that I use for this because it is the most like well-rounded side my, I personally feel for this deck against like the meta right now as we speak. Um, we got... I never, By the way, for the record, I want to go on the record and say... I only saw like one side card once, no twice, and I was very frustrated about it because. But then again, my main deck, because my main deck had to do all the work, I saw in like eight, six to eight side deck cards, and I only only twice did I ever see, and that was Super Poly and Lancia. The Lancia did okay, but he bricked anyways, and then Super Poly I didn't even get to use it because I had to discard it for combo. So, and he didn't really have nothing for me to super poly. So even though I saw him, they never did Jack Billy squat. But in theory, this is the most generic side deck in my personal opinion for this deck. Uh, two Nib. Two Lancia to pair with the Bell. Two Droll. The Droll and Lancia is for Flunder. I never got to pair it against Flunder, even though I heard there was quite a few there at, at the regionals that I was at. 
Uh, two evenly matched. Yeah, I only run two, and I saw both in that one game. Frustrating. Two Super Poly. Two Twin Twisters. And then the last two cards in the side are drum roll. Well, I actually have three cards on the side. Uh, I got one Duster. And then the last two is Zombie World and Necro World Banshee. If you don't, if you know, you know. <laughs> if you don't know, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you in on the the sauce and the secret. You can send Necro World Banshee to the graveyard off branded fusion. Okay. Her effect's a quick effect from Grave or Field. You can banish her and immediately activate a Zombie World. Zombie World says no to Flunder. Zombie World's on the field, turns everything in Field and Grave into a zombie. Guess what? They're not winged beasts anymore. On top of that, Zombie World also says you cannot tribute, new one can tribute summon monsters except for zombies. Zombie World does not affect the hand, so all of Flunder's cards in hand stays a winged beast, and you just win the game. This is a, like a Mystic Mine only for Flunder. This does not hurt you at all. The only time this would hurt you is if you're worried about your stuff being fairies, which only comes up in this build if you're running the field spell or you're running, uh, you go into Quertus. But outside of that, if you're playing against Flunder, it's okay to side out the field spell if you're running it for this or just activate this over top of it. So it's fine because you'll just straight out win because most of the time they're not going to side back or removal on you unless they're just really, really worried about outing your faithful. So yeah, no. So, but this, I, I didn't play Flunder, so I didn't really get to use this, but I've used it online and it, it, you just win with it. You just win games. It just steals straight steals games. Um, but that's it for the main extra inside. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, I expect more updates with it uh, or it or any a version of it and a couple of other adventure decks because now that I have the adventure engine, again, thanks to Jeremy helping me out, I have a couple of decks that I felt like long for a long time coming that were would have been better off using the adventure engine. So before it gets hit or crucified, I want to show you all the lists and everything like that. But again, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please hit that like button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button, bell notification, so you never miss an upload. Check out the Discord down in the description along with the merch store and everything else. And don't forget to look out for the vlog that's going to be coming out in a couple of days if it's not already out by the time I post this video. So, But again, I had an awesome time at the regionals. Again, shout out to them for hosting it. It was a very, very fun regional. Shout outs to everybody who came. Shout outs to the DDD fam for all of us going. It was really nice. Um, uh, again, uh, just go to regionals, guys. That's one last thing I want to leave on leave y'all with on this note is go to regionals. Have it, it, it's a whole nother experience, man. It, it it blows locals out of the water. It really does. Just because the overall experience, the fact that there's that many people there in one room that like the same game as you, the vendors, you can get a lot of good cards for really good prices. They trade for cards. You don't always have to buy them. If you have trades, they'll, t they'll buy trades off of you. They'll buy cards off of you. Um... But yeah, it's it, it's a very good experience, and um, I really think everybody should go to one, at least, because it, it's you, you'll you'll have a blast. But I hope you all enjoy the video. Your boy Drip, Team DDD, signing out. Peace.